There's a certain little devotional book for the 12 first Fridays of the year that you can get. And for each of these first Fridays, there's a, a little meditation. And today's meditation was on that part of the litany, salvation of them that trust in thee, have mercy on us. And the picture is painted, that famous scene when they're out on the boat in Lake Genezareth. And our Lord boards the boat in spite of, and maybe even because of, the coming storm. He knows in his divine knowledge that it's coming, but the disciples don't. They board the ship, and sure enough, the storm does come, and our Lord is sleeping peacefully underneath. And then the disciples running here and there and panicking and full of anxiety, they, they, they cry out for their master. And he comes to the help. And he comes up to the, the top of the boat. And the most beautiful scene, I think, one of the most peaceful scenes of the Holy Gospel is when he speaks to the wind and to the sea and he says, peace. Be still. And immediately the wind stops and the water is absolutely calm. You know how most of the time after a storm the, the water still is choppy? Not on this occasion. And that's why it is a miracle. Just perfectly calm and still. Now it all comes together though, because that church that that ship, that boat symbolized symbolizes the church and all of the wind and the waves and everything symbolizes the persecutions against the church. And well, you might say that we're the disciples. We panic sometimes when we see so many enemies trying to destroy the church. But then, lo and behold, St. Francis comes today too. What does our Lord tell him? He gives him a message towards the beginning of his, his, as he's founding his order. And he says, he says, Francis, rebuild my church. And Francis thinks he's talking about this one particular building, a church that had fallen into a little bit of disuse and uh, it was a little bit messy and everything. So he set to task and he, he rebuilt it all, made it a beautiful church. But our Lord told him, no, that's not what I meant. I meant rebuild my church. Because the men at that time had grown very cold in their devotion. And so the Franciscan order was founded. And it was meant to, he was meant to go out and to preach the gospel in such a loving and peaceful way that it would re-enkindle the fires of, of divine love in man's heart. And sure enough, the Franciscan order did just that, and the order grew very greatly. Well, then we make the connection to the October devotion. Or rather, before we get there, we think of what St. Francis said. Before he died, as you know, he called all of his brothers, Franciscan brothers, in around his bed, uh, his deathbed, and he said sort of what our Lord told the apostles. It's okay. Everything's going to be okay. But St. Francis tells them, you have to be brave, be strong, because there will come a time when a man will be elected, rather, not according to canon law, will be elected as a pope, and then there will be all sorts of persecutions and most of the orders will die out because they did not stand up for the true faith. And that, that's pretty much what has happened in our own day. All of these religious orders, gone, because there is no one to stand up and preach the faith. Everything. And so St. Francis comes today is a good day to pray to him to help us to rebuild the church, as it were, but now we have the October devotions too. They were started, and that consists of five decades of the rosary. 
Usually we try to say it before the Blessed Sacrament exposed, but in any case, it's before the Blessed Sacrament. And the five decades of the Rosary are said, followed by the Litany of Our Lady, and then the prayer to St. Joseph. And in that prayer, there is a, a little line that says, ask St. Joseph to protect the church as he once protected the divine child from such tribulation. It's a beautiful thought. But Pope Leo XIII instituted these October devotions on behalf of the church to, to pray for the protection of Holy Mother Church. How often do you pray for the church? We have all of our intentions. Pretty much, I bet most of us have them listed. Well, our, our loved ones, maybe even our priests and our bishops and our chapel here, and of course the holy souls, and we make reparation to the sacred heart, of course, and we have all these intentions. But how often do you remember during the day to pray for Holy Mother Church? It's such an important thing because the whole world, the whole world is against it. And all those waves of persecution hate the church. St. Francis said that in those days that he was speaking about, he said that the devils would have more power at those times, an unusual power to do things against the people, the Catholics, and against the church. And you see what they have done with Vatican II. That's why it's important that we keep up with our devotions. That is, that we remember St. Francis, rebuild my church. We remember the October devotions, particularly the rosary, to always pray the rosary for Holy Mother Church, that we remember our sacred heart devotions, that we make reparation for all those who persecute the church, which was born from where? From the sacred heart on the cross. So we do all of these things, and this is what will protect our church. Obviously, we know by faith that our church will never end. It will never die. No one will ever overtake it, but we still must do our part to pray and to sacrifice. So have a little chat with Eucharistic Jesus tonight in your holy hour about Holy Mother Church to make her grow through all the continents, through all the cities, and to, that we get more priests, more religious, who are fervent, not only in their own personal lives, but are zealous enough to go out and boldly preach the faith even to those who would persecute the church. That's what we look for on this wonderful feast of, of uh, St. Francis of Assisi. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.